Clearly a lot of these technologies can help benefit disabled people, but maybe you could expand on why queer and other marginalized folks might be interested in biotechnology. So I think people often ask this question of like, why should marginalized people be interested in biotechnology? And I think I kind of address this above, but basically I think this is the wrong question. Queer and other marginalized people have always already been interested in biotechnology. So I remember one of the most poignant moments for me at last year's event was actually after the event, someone came up to me and they were basically like, hey, this was great, but why is this space so white? Like everybody's in there talking about cyborgs, like they're, you know, people with microchips in their hands. But the most cyborg people I know are broke black people who live in the inner city and don't have any institutional access to medicine and they have to DIY everything. Disabled people have been biohacking just to get through their days since the beginning of time. This process of figuring out how to use technological objects in order to interact with a world that is not accessible to somebody with a body like yours is biohacking. I think queer and trans people are constantly hacking our own bodies in order to be visible to each other, um, in order to find some kind of like peace within our own skins and in order to be able to have sex. One of my like ongoing pet theories is that the current political moment in queerness was primarily catalyzed by about 15 years ago it becoming possible to buy black market hormones over the internet. So like young trans people who are interested in and experimenting on their own bodies, that's biohacking. I'm kind of obsessed with this article right now, this Fanny Sosa article called Biohack is Black, where she talks about biohacking as a survival skill of historically enslaved and indigenous people, and how our cultural image of the cyborg as white erases the way that modern biotechnology was built on the medical abuse of black people's bodies. And one thing that I keep thinking back on is last year um, at the kind of global community bio summit, which is a this is a DIY bio conference that happens at MIT. The One of the keynote speaker there, LaDonna Allard, is one of the water protectors from the Standing Rock Sioux tribe. And she gave a speech in which one of the things she said over and over is that my people have always been scientists. We have this sort of like white colonial post-industrial idea that nature and technology are opposed to each other, but indigenous people have been studying and interacting with the world in these rigorous scientific technological ways since the dawn of time. And I don't know, I just, I guarantee that the questions that marginalized people are asking about the intersection between, intersections between embodiment and biology are significantly more nuanced and rigorous and concerned about harm reduction and political and ethical implications than, you know, whatever questions led someone to decide that like cryogenically freezing our heads after death is the technology that we need. So just to circle back, I think this question of like, why should marginalized folks be interested in biotechnology is really the wrong direction. I think the answer is that marginalized folks are to a great degree experts on biotechnology. I think the real question we need to ask, be asking is why are the people who consider themselves to be self-identified biohackers hyper-focused on what such a narrow band of what biotechnology can actually be and how can we, how can we cut that out?